Here, no doubt, was the evidence Mobius wished me to have. For the vampires had prophesied not one, but two champions. One destined to be Nosgoth's redeemer, the other its destroyer. The vampire's hero wielded the Reaver, forged for this very purpose. His opponent was clearly the champion of their adversaries, the Hilden, and brandished a flaming sword. The foretold outcome was unambiguous. The vampire hero would fall. Prophecies, myths, and epic ballads are all staples of the fantasy genre. Writers use prophecy in their stories as a device to advance the plot, hint at events to come, and create an air of mystery around their characters. They often appear as poems and riddles, though they can take other forms like images as well. When done properly, prophecies can be engaging and help retain an audience's interest in the plot, not enough to make them want to see how it unfolds. They generally should be ambiguous, to leave just the right amount of mystery so that their full meaning isn't completely obvious while being straightforward and easy enough to understand. Legacy of Cain introduces a simple but effective prophecy to drive its story, a climactic battle between two champions destined to decide the fate of Nosgoth. On one hand, we have the champion of the Hilden race, representing immortality and divinity. He appears as this demonic creature, wielding a sword woven in flame, and is ordained to fight the vampire champion and destroy him or be destroyed. This hero is supposed to break the shackles of the vampire's tyrannous, unseen god, whilst also facilitating the Hilden's escape from the demon dimension. The vampire champion, on the other hand, is the defender of the ancient vampires. He is the bearer of the Reaver Blade, and is alleged to serve and protect the Wheel of Fate, and thus enforce the Elder God's will, who the vampires fervently worshipped. Many believe the vampire champion to be the saviour of Nosgoth and its redeemer, and as such, refer to the Hilden Champion as the world's destroyer. This is likely due to the fact that the ancient vampires were the original architects of the Pillars of Nosgoth, humongous edifices whose well-being was intrinsically tied to the spiritual and physical health of the land. The corruption and downfall of the Pillars essentially equates to the poisoning of the land and the suffering of its people. As the self-righteous guardians of the Pillars, the ancients basically inserted themselves as the world's protectors. Only through the restoration of the pillars can Nosgoth be redeemed. Notable characters in the series, such as Cain and Janos, believe Raziel to be the vampire champion, and even affirm he is through dialogue, whereas others like Mortanius and Ariel consider him dangerous and are convinced he is the Hilden champion. I was confronted again with depictions of the vampire's champion, the bearer of the Reaver Blade. And here too was his Hilden adversary, with blazing eyes brandishing a flaming sword. Two heroes locked in combat which only one would survive. But which one? These murals prophesied two possible outcomes. I didn't know what Mobius was trying to concoct, but this all seemed too convenient. Introducing prophecy into a narrative can be challenging because many writers fall into the trap of making a character seem important to justify the storyline they want. A poorly handled prophecy can lead to a character becoming a passive protagonist who is dragged along by someone else's agenda or plan, without necessarily having compelling motivations of their own. Thankfully, Legacy of Cain doesn't go down this route, as it gives its characters personal reasons to continue on their journeys despite the existence of these portents. For the Elder Cain, his ultimate goal is to see the world restored to its former beauty, whilst maintaining his role as sovereign. For Raziel, his objective is to uncover the truth of his destiny, and discover the reasons as to why the ancient vampires will create a weapon to imprison him, their own supposed saviour. Although I think Defiance's script spends too much time setting up the destined battle between the two champions, especially in the early sections where there are these long drawn out sequences in the Vampire Citadel, both main characters are still driven by their own reasons, and are entirely interesting in their own right. Prophecy in fiction is a funny thing. It almost always comes true, but sometimes in a way you don't expect. 
The most satisfying prophecies are the ones led with tricks and double meanings. And Legacy of Cain Defiance manages to pull this off in a brilliant yet unexpected way. In early stages of the game, Mobius informs Cain that Raziel is fated to kill the vampire, regardless of Raziel's free will. When demanding proof to back up such claims, Cain is directed by Mobius to a testament written in stone, a mural which illustrated the death of the vampire hero. The vampire later goes on to find further murals which depict both outcomes of the fight. Cain is rightfully suspicious of Mobius' intentions in leading him to this place, but the idea that these two champions represented Raziel and himself does cross Cain's mind, which is exactly what Mobius wanted Cain to think. Cain isn't the only one who is pushed into believing he's one of the champions. Raziel is as well. In Soul Reaver 2, Janusz tried to hand Raziel the Reaver and then urged him to reclaim it after it was stolen, saying the blade was forged for Raziel alone. In Defiance, this caused our protagonist to at first identify with the vampire champion, who was shown holding the Reaver in a dark forge mural. But Raziel begins to have serious doubts about his role, given that the Reaver tried to consume him at the climax of Soul Reaver 2. There was also his uncanny resemblance to the Hilden adversary to consider. While the mural didn't show Raziel's iconic blue skin, it did feature glowing eyes and a fiery sword that matched Raziel's wraith blade. These images led Raziel to wonder if Cain, and not he, had been the vampire hero of prophecy all along. Cain didn't much resemble the image of the vampire champion, but he was a vampire and carried the reaver. History is written by the victors. Beneath the vaults of Avernus, I discovered scenes that told a familiar story, but from a very different point of view. This was the work of the enemy race, and revealed what the vampire histories had conveniently omitted. How the noble vampires, God-ridden and righteous, had started the wars that would destroy both races, victor and vanquished alike. Their adversaries opposed the vampire's god and refused to submit to the wheel of fate. For this, they were banished. I now understood the poetic irony of their curse, and my resemblance to the vampire's enemy no longer seemed so accidental. The banished race foretold a hero who would deliver them from their oppressors and destroy the shackles of the vampire's tyrannous god, the same hero that bore the flaming sword. What game was this, where every player on the board claimed the same pawn? So, Raziel, your true nature is finally revealed. You were never the vampire's savior. It is to the Hilden race you belong. And when Cain realizes this, what do you think he will do? It seems the Elder God is using what's depicted at face value on the mural to pit Raziel against Cain. While Raziel had given up on his quest for vengeance, instead directing his attention towards finding answers to the mysteries about his place in the world, the mural suggested a final battle between himself and Cain was inevitable. During the time Raziel was exploring the depths of Avernas Cathedral, he came to the conclusion that he was the hero for the Hilden race, and that Cain was his vampire counterpart. Now I'm not saying Raziel is himself Hilden. He was clearly once human, then vampire, and now Wraith. The closest he may come to belonging to the enemy race is by virtue of being their piece on the board. Given that the Hilden were also adamantly opposed to the Elder God and refused to submit to his wheel of fate, it was reasonable for Raziel to assume that he belonged to the Hilden when considering his own personal conflict with the Elder. Still, Raziel was not actively seeking a final showdown with Cain. In fact, he only moved to confront Cain after learning the whereabouts of the Heart of Darkness, which he needed to resurrect Janos Audrin, who had briefly acted as a mentor figure to Raziel. Upon discovering the Heart resided in Cain, Raziel challenged the vampire, ignoring Cain's attempts to reason with him, prompted by Hilden energy which fueled his rage. While also fearing the weapon held by his former sire, Raziel clashed with Cain. Ultimately, Raziel won, wrenching the beating heart out of Cain's chest so that he could bring back the one person who showed him a measure of compassion. Only after the deed was done did the madness which influenced him subside leaving Raziel with a sinking feeling that once again he played right into his enemy's hands. 
Which hero do you think you are now? The vampire savior? Or the other one? Have you realized yet that it didn't matter to us which one either of you thought you were? So long as the result was the same in the end. And now, Cain is dead. Really, I cannot thank you enough. So, this has all been arranged every step of the way. And Cain thought I truly had free will. Oh, but you do. And there's the greatest triumph of all. To have compelled the one player who could choose into doing exactly what we required. Well done, faithful servant. As the time streamer says, it did not matter which champion Kane or Raziel convinced themselves they were, so long as they would fight and Kane would die. Clearly, Raziel's interpretation of the prophecy that he was the Hilden hero and Kane was the vampire one wasn't as simple as he thought. It was far more labyrinthian than he could have imagined. Okay, now I have a small confession to make. On my first playthrough of this game, the final twists regarding the true nature of the prophecy went completely over my teenage head. Like many others on the internet who were confused trying to identify which character was which champion, I didn't get it. And honestly, the reason is because the game didn't spell it out for me. It was only years later, scrolling through dozens of lock wiki pages, when I finally found the answer. And what a reveal it was. To think, Raziel was the vampire and the Hilden champions. That's right, he was both prophesied warriors, and Kane's role as Scion of Balance was a different entity completely. At the start of the game, the prophecy was set up so that people would expect two conflicting champions, when in reality, it was just one conflicted individual. One of the main aspects of Raziel's character is that he's rather easy to manipulate if you make him angry. By rolling him up, and egging him on, forces like the Hilden and the Elder God can trick Raziel into making a hasty decision without him stopping to consider the implications of his actions. Therefore, he is often easily manipulated into aiding the Hilden agenda when he prefer to take the vampire's side. He's not the Hilden champion by choice or by being one of them, he's merely a tool to help them achieve their goals. The Champion of the Ancients is supposed to save Nosgoth and restore the vampire race to glory, while the Hilden Champion is supposed to ruin Nosgoth and free the Hilden from their prison. By taking the Heart of Darkness to revive Janos, Raziel provides the Hilden with a suitable vessel for their general to possess, allowing said general to enact a plan to devastate Nosgoth and conceivably try to bring freedom to his race in Blood Omen 2. However, by purifying Cain of all corruption, Raziel ensures that the pillars are once more in the possession of the vampires, with a possibility that they might be restored in the future. In director Amy Hennig's own words, as the Hilden champion, he destroys the vampire messiah with his fiery sword by sacrificing himself. And as the vampire hero, he vanquishes the Hilden savior by obliterating himself with the reaver. Thus he ends up fulfilling the roles of both heroes simultaneously. The best twists are the ones where the writers have left clues for the audience to figure out for themselves. The saying Redeemer and Destroyer was often used in defiance to refer to the champions individually. However clever players may have recalled Mobius's iconic line when he first greets the Wraith Raziel in the time streaming device at the end of Soul Reaver 1 and in the opening scene of Soul Reaver 2. Redeemer and Destroyer, Pawn and Messiah, welcome, time span soul, welcome to your destiny. This line indicates that Mobius indeed knew the truth of Raziel's hybrid destiny. Vorador also appeared to understand something about the matter. In defiance, he wondered what side Raziel was on, and when Raziel asked why Vorador forged a weapon, the Reaver, to imprison the vampire's supposed saviour, Vorador replied that Raziel had chosen his path. Vorador knew there was a choice for Raziel to make, and two paths he could take, but probably did not realise that Raziel could fill both roles at the same time. When I first learned about this, my mind was blown. 
The writers took the basic premise of an either-or prophecy where either good triumphs over evil or evil defeats good and turned it on its head so that both prophesied outcomes came true. Back then, I couldn't believe how I missed such an awesome twist. But to be fair to my younger self, the implication that Raziel was both the vampire and Hilden champions was not made explicit in the game. It was only ever hinted at. You and Kane will spend eternity buried here together, praying for the merciful release of a death that will never come. But I was armed with newfound knowledge, and it burned within me. Redeemer and Destroyer. Mobius had never seen his master until the Soul Reaver purified his sight. Even the ancient vampires had no idea what it was they so righteously worshipped. You must unite what has been set asunder. All the conflict and strife throughout history, all the fear and hatred, served but one purpose, to keep my master's wheel turning. All souls were prisoners, trapped in the pointless round of existence, leading distracted, blunted lives, until death returned them, always in ignorance, to the wheel. The coin is still turning. But what hope had there been? One cannot fight the unseen. Only then will the sign of balance be armed for his true endeavor. Despair, Raziel. There is no escape. It was then I knew what I had to do. I alone could end this. Believe me, I appreciate subtlety in writing. I'm all for a writer showing an audience rather than telling them. But there are times to be subtle and there are times to emphasize the massive plot twist you've been building towards since the start of the game. I think Defiance could have finished better by explicitly having Raziel convey in dialogue that he was both champions, just like he had done when he realized that the soul-devouring entity trapped in the Reaver Blade had always been him at the end of Soul Reaver 2. In my opinion, Defiance's story would have had a much better payoff if it had overtly revealed Raziel's dual role. But I'm curious to hear your thoughts on the subject. Did you work out that Raziel was both champions on your first playthrough? Or did you totally miss it like me? Do you agree that the reveal should have been emphasized for greater dramatic effect in the closing chapters of Defiance? Comment below and let me know. Like if you liked the video, subscribe if you want to see more Legacy of Kane content, and allow me to finish by wishing you all the very best for the new year ahead. Later.